Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today I have a really fun video planned with you guys. And I actually did this same video a year ago, almost a year ago from today. That's really wild to think about. So about a year ago, I did a video with my favorite art supplies on Amazon. And the reason why I did this is because I really like to get my stuff online. I'm not, I don't know, I've become quite the online shopper over the years. And I think with art supplies, it works to my advantage financially because, okay, let's just say there's a lot of hidden gems I have found on Amazon from like startup art companies that end up being really good. Yeah, I wanna show you some stuff that I have gotten off of Amazon over time that I really like. And I found a lot of new stuff within the past year. So some of the stuff you're gonna see in today's video might be the same as my original favorite art supplies on Amazon video from last year which that's a good sign, right? It means I still use it and I still like it. But a lot of this stuff is also new, so that's exciting. I'm saying this because not all of this stuff can be found at like Michael's and Hobby Lobby, or if it is in an art store, it's like not in one that I have found that you can apply those like really nice 40% off coupons. So I always check on Amazon before I buy anything to see if I can find it cheaper. And a lot of the time I can. Sometimes I can't though, it doesn't always work that way. So I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite things that I have gotten from Amazon. Oh my goodness, this makes me wanna play art or something. This makes me wanna play art. This makes me want to draw because it's like all sprawled out in front of me right now. It's like Christmas. Okay, the first thing. I recently just got these. And what these are, <laughs> these are Posca paint pens. And I got the thicker ones. See, these nibs are pretty thick, but they have them with really fine tipped nibs too. So it depends on like what you wanna use them for. But I was really excited to find these on Amazon for a really affordable price because I searched all over town for these markers and I saw them at Blix, but they were like way more expensive. Anyway, I saw them at Blix, but they were a lot more expensive, so. <laughs> Got them on Amazon. I like these for sketchbook art because it makes my pages pop with a little bit more color. I haven't done like huge projects with them because I admit I really just love decorating packages that I send to people with them. I know that sounds so silly, but it's really fun. Okay, the next thing was seriously the best gem that I have found on Amazon in a really long time. But this, you guys have probably heard about this if you're like an artist and you watch YouTube videos. This is an ELO sketchbook. And I saw Rin from Drawing With Waffles using this. So I bought one. Because if you watch my follow me around the art stores vlog around Christmas, I was looking for a sketchbook. And I couldn't find one that I like really wanted. And then I saw her using this in a video and decided yeah, we're gonna, we're just gonna do this one. The reasons why I like this is because it's like a square sketchbook. It's super sturdy, but it like has that nice leather feel so you like kind of feel good about yourself. I mean, that makes me feel good about myself. I don't know about you. <laughs> Comment down below, does a leatherish or like hardcover sketchbook make you feel better about yourself than like the spiral bound? Am I the only one who feels this way? Like, come on guys, let me know. So I love this sketchbook because it is just regular drawing paper. But what's really nice about this is I can do watercolor and the pages do not warp. They're not super textured, they're very smooth and it's just very versatile for every medium. And something else that's really cool is, um, so a lot of marker drawings I do in here don't soak through the pages, which is really nice. Now, Copic markers, I'm pretty sure did go through these pages. I can't find a piece that I've done. I can't, I can't give stuff away. That's really secretive. Oh, I did do this Posca pen doodle in here though. When I first got those pens, I just watched them and it was really fun. But anyway, hands down, this is maybe the best sketchbook I've ever had. In fact, I have heard word on the street that it was like sold out for over a month. 
and I was really glad I got it when I did. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to leave links to my favorite stuff below if you're curious. But if not, that's okay. You can just watch a fun little like haul type of show and tell. I don't know. Video. Ah! <laughs> okay, the next thing I got. You guys have seen me talk these up a storm in pretty much so many videos. By now you're probably sick of it. But these Prima watercolors are like my babies. They fit in my purse so I can take them anywhere. They have palettes for like every little occasion. For instance, this is probably one of my favorite palettes. This is the complexion palette. So this palette is specifically catered toward skin tones. Wow, I feel like a beauty guru. Showing a makeup palette, but it's a paint palette. Anyway, I really love this palette. I use it a lot. <laughs> I think I have five or six of these palettes now. I only have five right here, but the Pastel Dreams palette is so beautiful. Look at that. And it comes with a swatch card. So I really like these and they're pretty affordable paints. If you're just getting into watercolor, this is great. But if you're like a student or you just paint for fun, this is really great. I really like these, which is why I hoard them and I have a problem. And I'm admitting to my problem because I'm embracing it. I am probably gonna get more of these. I should add that these are like the creamiest watercolors I've ever used, which is why I like them so much. So while we're on the topic of watercolor, here's a really similar palette from Arteza, except instead of having a bunch of little palettes, there's 36 colors in this giant palette. It's really nice. They actually sent this to me, but I'm in, they actually sent this to me and I'm including it in this video because it's pretty affordable on Amazon, so yeah. But these paints are different than the Primas because they're a lot harder. So um, if you don't like creamy watercolor, I would recommend this. I really, really have to say that these blues are like my favorite thing about the palette, all the blues. I think they are very pigmented. And I'm saying that because I'm really picky with blue watercolors. I've had some palettes in the past that I'm just like, man, this is a bummer. But these ones are really nice. So I would recommend this palette to somebody who is a student looking for really high quality watercolors that aren't super expensive. So you don't need the most expensive thing on the watercolor market, I guess, when you're learning. But this is really nice and I would definitely recommend it. Even if you just wanna do watercolor like for fun or you know, you consider yourself advanced or a beginner, I am a fan of bargain supply. I know I talk about Arteza a lot on my channel and I work with them on occasion, but I work with them because I really love their products and support their company, so like, yeah. And they actually didn't sponsor this. They have no idea I'm including this. In a video, this is just something I really like. This is something I never would have thought to show in a YouTube video, but every time I sharpen a pencil on my channel, people freak out and they're like, dude, how did you get your pencil that sharp? Like, what are you using? I am using this beast here. This is a Mitsubishi pencil sharpener and it is wicked. Let me see if I have a pencil around here. I'll show you what it does. Okay, I have this rainbow pencil. It's already on my desk. I don't have like any doll pencils around here, but I'll show you. So you pinch these clasps and you pull this out and then you put the pencil in here. So once you put the pencil in, it holds it in place with this other clasp. And so when you do this, it basically holds your pencil and brings it toward the sharpener. Super precise, never breaks your lead and it's glorious. All right, let's talk gouache now. It's like a paint party. I'm gonna show you all the gouache I use. I love it so much. So I recently found this one brand. It's called M. Graham & Co. They sell huge tubes of white gouache and I really like this gouache. It covers amazingly. I want to try it in like other colors, but I haven't gotten around to that. All right, next is more Arteza stuff, but this is their gouache and it's really good. This is really good if you are just starting out or as I said, you're a student. I really like using this and I have no issues with it. I think it works really well 
and it covers very evenly. No complaints there. This is their premium grade. I think they have a student grade or like a beginner's grade too. So like if you are just starting out, I'm, I think there's a cheaper option for you. I can't remember though, so don't take me on that. The next gouache brand that I really love is Winsor & Newton. So these are like my babies. I got their primary color set as a gift once and then I just started building my collection immediately after that. And this is like the best gouache I think I've ever used, hands down. And if I can't find those cheap at like Michaels or Blix with like coupons and stuff, then I just, I usually just go to Amazon, so. But sometimes you can get deals on these at Michaels if your Michaels carries them, so. It is worth a try. All right, this thing I actually have not used yet, but I'm so excited about it, so I just wanna show it. This is a glass sheet, and it is a paint palette, and I'm so excited. I've been wanting one of these, so that's just a random tidbit. I found this on Amazon, and I had been looking everywhere for like an affordable glass palette. And when I got it, I did not think it was gonna be this massive, <laughs> but yeah. All right, I have a couple other things I want to show. Here are some detail brushes. I pretty much only get my paint brushes on Amazon these days because you can get large brush sets for pretty cheap and I don't know, I really like them. All right, so I separated these. These are the Virtuoso brushes. I need to rinse them out, but they are a little more flexible of a detail brush than these ones. These are Arteza's brushes, and they're a little more stiff, so it's really nice if you need like a stiff brush for details. So yeah, this is what they look like up close. Sorry that they're so <laughs> kind of gross and dirty, but I literally use these brushes almost every day that I get their use. And I got them on Amazon! I was so excited! Okay, the next thing. We're gonna delve into paper real quick. So I got this watercolor on Amazon, I don't remember, a couple months ago. And I talked about it in a video and said I didn't like it very much. And then somebody commented and they were like, no, just use it a few more times. It takes some time to get used to. I promise you'll like it. So I did, and I ended up really, really liking it. This is B watercolor paper, and it is cotton paper. And I feel like it's a little different than Arches, if you've ever used that. I'm a huge fan of cotton watercolor papers. Everything shows up so crisp and nice, and I love it. But while we're on the topic of watercolor paper, there's also this watercolor pad from Arteza. It is also cotton watercolor paper. I like to mess around with a lot of different paper brands, and I was pretty impressed with this. It's got a little more tooth to it than the last one. The B one was pretty smooth. I know you can't see it because the exposure, the sun and stuff, whatever, just trust me. So then the next one, this big guy here, my Arches baby. This is like my absolute favorite paper, I think. Arches has like a lot of really good paper. This one has some texture to it, but I really think I like the smooth one more than this one. Anyway, I get my Arches paper on Amazon because I feel like I can get it cheaper there than Blix. But again, pricing depends on like the time of year, if you have valid coupons, if that item is on sale. Um, there are so many factors that play into it. I'm gonna say all of that stuff is relative because prices, they change a lot, you know what I mean? I want to share like what I get on Amazon to you guys because there's definitely some really good deals on there. Like I have never seen this in real life at any art store. I've never seen any Arteza supplies in an art store around here anyway. Oh, I have a couple more things for you though. I have been super into Zentangles lately. So I have these Jelly Roller gel pens. This is what they look like up close. These are such creamy gel pens. I love them so much. So I would recommend those. I have never seen these like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or anything either. I've only seen them online, but if you live in a bigger city than me, you will, maybe you'll see them. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap this up soon, I promise. I feel like I've been talking way too much. All right, this is a Tombow calligraphy pen. I think it's called like, oh man. I think I held that upside down for you guys and it was really hard to get it to focus. What is this thing called? It says calligraphy pen on it. That's what it is, it is. Um, they have really 
Hey everybody. They have phenomenal tips to them. I use these to design fonts and just sketch and hand letter. They're really nice. There's a set online that comes with like a hard tip and a soft tip. Really great. I can't find my other one right now. Okay, these are really wonderful as well. They are the Pentel Aquash pens that essentially hold your water. So if you like to go to cafes or something and do art on the go, I would recommend these brushes. You don't have to bring water with you. This is pretty much a staple in my art bag. I think this would go in before everything else. I know that these are at Michael's though, so if you can like work a 40% off coupon to get these cheaper, you might get a better deal. But yeah, I got mine on Amazon. <laughs> So the reason why I did this video is not to bash art stores for prices or anything like that, but I just wanted to put resources in front of you and show you that like there are so many amazing supplies out there. You are not limited to what you see in stores, especially if you live in a really small town. So I encourage you to just explore your options and I wanted to show you stuff that like I actually use on and off camera because I think it's really cool to compare what other artists use and what works and what doesn't work for them. I get a lot of comments from you guys asking for art supply recommendations, so I hope that this video helps. I hope that maybe seeing a bunch of different supplies inspires you to try something new. And if you have any of these supplies already, let me know what you think of them below. If there's anything in this video that maybe you plan on trying, let me know too. I really love hearing what other people like to use. So with that being said, I want to ask you guys for recommendations too. Like what's your favorite art supply and where did you buy yours? Alrighty, I am so sorry for rambling. I will let you go now. If you're still here, thank you for sticking around and watching this really random video. This is just something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Okay, have a good day. Bye.